Gwendolyn! What does this mean? Merely that I am engaged to Mr. Worthing, Mama. Come here. Sit down. Sit down immediately. Mr. Worthing, you will clearly understand that all communication between... In this shot, the focus is on Lady Bracknell. Because it is a medium shot and because of the angle, Lady Bracknell is the centre of attention and takes up much more of the screen than Gwendolyn, who is partially hidden from view. Through this character placement and the camera angle and distance, the audience can see that Lady Bracknell is by far the superior of Gwendolyn and has much more power and authority. Throughout the text, authority and power seem to increase with age and money, and Lady Bracknell is both old and rich. This shot reflects her authority and Gwendolyn's lack thereof. Oh, no, Bunbury doesn't live here. Bunbury is somewhere else at present. In fact, Bunbury is dead. Dead? When did Mr. Bunbury die? Oh, I killed Bunbury this afternoon. I mean, Bunbury died this afternoon. What did he die of? Bunbury? Oh, he was quite exploded. Exploded? Was he a victim of a revolutionary outrage? My dear Aunt Augusta, I mean he was found out. The doctors found out that Bunbury could not live. That is what I mean. So Bunbury died. Hmm. And now that we have finally got rid of this Mr. Bunbury, may I ask Mr. Worthing, who is that young person whose hand my nephew Algernon is holding? in what appears to me to be a peculiarly unnecessary manner. That lady the mise-en-scene in this shot consists of Mr. Worthing, a rich man dressed in a clean, white, expensive-looking suit, standing in front of a number of shiny, clean, expensive-looking items. As though this wasn't enough to demonstrate how rich Mr. Worthing is, the scene is set in a country house, something that only wealthier people would be expected to have. Throughout the importance of being earnest, rich people are expected to live like rich people, and from this part of the film alone, it's quite clear that Mr. Worthing is not only a very rich man, but also that he lives accordingly. I know I require information. Until yesterday, I had no idea there were any families or persons whose origin was a terminus. Miss Cardew is the granddaughter of the late Mr. Thomas Cardew of 149 Belgrave Square, South West, Jervis Park, Dorking, Surrey, and the Sporran. That sounds not unsatisfactory. Three addresses always inspire confidence, even in tradesmen. But what proof have I of their authenticity? I have carefully preserved the court guide. Throughout this entire scene, there are flowers in many places around the room. Although it wouldn't take a rocket scientist to guess that the flowers are symbolic of romance and love, it is worth noting the dried up flowers in Lady Bracknell's hair, as opposed to the bright, colourful flowers everywhere else in the room. In the context of this point in the film, it would be fair to say that the flowers are not only symbolic of romance, but also of two differing views on the nature of marriage. While the younger people in the room are all currently of the mindset, that marriage is a romantic experience, Lady Bracknell is of the opinion that marriage is about social status and money. Accordingly, the flowers around the room are bright and colourful, while the flowers in Lady Bracknell's hair are lifeless and dull. As a matter of form, Mr Worthing, I had better ask if Miss Cardew has any little fortune. Oh, only about £130,000 in the funds, that is all. Goodbye, Lady Bracknell. So pleased to have seen you. One moment, Mr. Worthing. At this point in the film, Lady Bracknell undoes her cloak. Beneath the dull grey cloak is a brighter, more colourful top, hinting that, perhaps, there is another side to Lady Bracknell and that the cold, grey old woman is but one aspect of her personality. However, the reason she is opening her cloak is to appear more kindly towards Cecily, whom she has just found out is quite a rich girl. This attempt by Lady Bracknell to appear kinder towards Cecily, when her motives are still money orientated, is reflected in her clothing. Although, yes, Lady Bracknell's top is actually bright and colourful, and maybe even friendly, atop her head is still the dry, dead flowers, and her dull, colourless cloak fails to disappear from view. This is a perfect demonstration of her one sidedness and her failed attempt to appear other than she is. Prettiest girl in the world. And I don't care two pins for social possibilities. Never speak disrespectfully of society, Algernon. Only people who can't get into it do that.